<laughs> and here we go. <laughs> Let's start with something delicious, namely chopped chocolate. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome everybody to my kitchen on this Saturday afternoon, soon to be Saturday evening. And as the title of this uh, video says, this is going to be a giant chocolate chip cookie. And the first step in making a giant chocolate chip cookie is, well, let's chop up some chocolate, shall we? <laughs> because yes, this is going to be a cookie made from scratch. And the nice thing about that is we can add as much chocolate as we want. Well, we don't want to overdo it because we still want the cookie to have some um, consistency. So when I make my cookies, I like to use two kinds of chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate chips and some chopped milk chocolate, which is what we have right here. This is, of course, uh, the remains, or some of the remains, of a giant Hershey's bar, which was a Christmas present. <laughs> um, and, well, obviously, we're chopping it up. After that, we'll get down to the real business of uh, making ourselves a giant cookie baked in a cast iron skillet. This really isn't so hard. <laughs> yes, um, as I said, it is going to be a, as it, again, as the title says, one foot, a uh, foot long cookie. Well, technically foot wide cookie because it is going to be baked in a circular uh, cast iron pan. A vintage cast iron pan, in fact. There we go. Off to a decent start. I love making these uh, giant cookies from scratch. They're so easy to do. They're really not expensive. Probably the most expensive part is the chocolate. And as I mentioned, this, uh, this milk chocolate here was a Christmas present, so I didn't pay for it anyway. And once we do that, maybe chop it a little bit down this way as well. We will get down to the uh, business here of making ourselves a cookie. The oven is preheated to 325 degrees Fahrenheit because that's all we need. This cookie is going to take about, probably about 40 minutes or so, maybe a little less to bake. So really, the hard part is pretty much what I'm doing right now. And we're almost done, in fact. A little bit more. This, that, and the other thing. Appreciate your patience. And try to chop down a little, a few more of the big pieces. There we go. This is about four ounces of uh, chopped chocolate. There we go, because this is indeed going to be a very rich cookie. <laughs> Much better than those crappy things you pay $15 for at Wally World. Uh, this chocolate was in the fridge because it does need to be hardened, sort of, you know, just so that it doesn't melt at this point. And in fact, I'm going to stick this in the freezer where it will be for, oh, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes or so. So here we are. Here is some chopped milk chocolate going in the freezer. And then we will get to the next step. Move this cutting board aside. Oh. 
And hello again. Nice uh, to see people uh, who have joined. Thank you very much. I hope you stick around a little bit. I am not asking for gifts. I am just here really to waste some time this afternoon and have some fun making a nice <coughs> cookie. Well, the cookie is actually something of a thank you present. Let's get rid of this wire here. I didn't want that to be showing. There we go. All right. So next up will be the dry ingredients, which is also nice and simple. And we start out with two cups of flour. Uh, oh, here we are. That's one. And two. Oh, plop. Always make a mess. That's pretty much mandatory, unfortunately, in my kitchen, or so it seems like. Fortunately, it's my kitchen. Which means it's my mess, and I will clean it up afterwards. I definitely will clean it up because if I don't, well, I'm not going to be able to make future videos. Okay, that was that. So now we just do a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, here, right? Where did my I had my spoons all out? There they are. Okay, teaspoon of baking soda. I have made cookies without baking soda before, and they really, they just turn very, very thick. You need those air bubbles on the inside. You need the leavener to uh, get a, a decent a decent consistency on your cookie. And with that, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Love using kosher salt because, again, of the consistency. It, it's nice and flaky. It just still dissolves nicely into the cookie, though. Quarter teaspoon of that. And also, here is a secret ingredient that I like using in my cookies and cakes as well. I think it should be used more often in baking, but it isn't. Cream of tartar. You've probably heard of cream of tartar, but what is it? Well, I'm not going to get all chemical on you or sciency, but I will say, I'm using half a teaspoon of it, Cream of tartar essentially kind of like, I shouldn't say thickens it, but more like uh, makes it more sturdy in that it's less likely to uh, crack or fall apart. It's not going to make it, it's not going to dry it out, but it'll make it a good and sturdy or help make it more sturdy, I should say. All right, then from there... Well, at least I guess all we have to do now is whisk the dry ingredients. And that's the other thing I've learned. Whisking your dry ingredients is actually very important because it helps incorporate air into the dough and into the final cookie. So this is actually quite important. It's not hard to do. But it's a step that you really shouldn't skip. It doesn't seem like much, but it does make a difference. There we go. Yeah, welcome to my channel where I pretend to be a professional. I'm not a professional baker or chef. I am just a hobbyist. But I enjoy this hobby. So, there we go. That takes care of the dry ingredients. Now we can move on to the wet ingredients. It's also quite simple. Uh, later, or cream later in cream later in meringue for pies. Mm, yeah, no, that is good. Um, okay, and now from here we throw in some uh, softened butter. Well, this is definitely softened butter, all right. It's practically melted. I melted this in my trusty six inch cast iron pan. There we 
we go. Should probably even stretch the rest of this. So that's definitely sucked in butter all right. And that is also an answer to the question. They sell these six inch cast iron skillets. What do we use them for? Oh, they have a ton of uses. One of which is world's best butter melter, not to mention making individual cookies and pies and cakes. So yes, there is, I mean, definitely a cast iron, a six inch cast iron skillet has some uses, quite a few uses. And next up, now that we're past the thing that screensaver here, I have to undo. All right, we, where was I? Uh, six ounces, one and a half sticks of unsalted butter, soften. Oh, nuts, I do, always forget something. Forgot my sugars. So here's the white sugar and the brown sugar. Fact, may even have. To, yeah, I think I'll have to break out another bag of brown sugar. Here, I thought I was prepared, but I always forget something. Well, so it goes. And anyway, that's what we, that's what I get for doing these things live. You never see this on um, those professional cooking videos. because those professional cooking videos are smart enough not to do this live. However, I become rather fond of doing these things live, despite the fact that everybody gets to see all my mistakes, and boy, do I make a lot of mistakes. Because as I said, I am not a professional. For starters, I do not want to cut my finger off with these scissors here. But there we go. Anyway, we go again for three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. So there's one. And immediately after this, the rest of this, of course, will go into my uh, um, Pyrex oh, covered bowl. Two. And three. Come on, always something. Three. Told you I'm not a professional. Good thing I cleaned up my counter first. All right, now for the rest of this, we get to put this in here. There we go. I just decided to do it this way so that the rest of this should fit nicely into this covered bowl here because of course you need an airtight container for brown sugar. I have had the misfortune of having to chip away at fossilized brown sugar. That's not fun. And this goes away. Because I love quoting one of my favorite movies, Ratatouille. You know, the one where she says, keep your workspace clean or I shall kill you. And I certainly do my best to live up to that. Anyway, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And one third of a cup of white sugar. Here's the thing about brown sugar versus white sugar. If you use more brown sugar than white, you get a chewy cookie, which is what everyone loves. If you use more white sugar than brown sugar, you get a cakey cookie, which is also good and everybody loves it, but more people love the chewy cookies. So there we go. That all comes to a little bit more than a cup of sugar. Which is all we need. What I do now? <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Told you this is live. Can you tell? Shit. Anyway. By the way, the name of my channel is Cast Iron Chaos. And those of those of you who may have seen my channel before know 
chaos certainly tends to rule on my channel. <laughs> oh well, no major disasters. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes. Um, okay, we've done the sugar. Next up comes an egg. Which, it just occurs to me, I should probably actually use a bigger container. I should probably not crack the egg directly into the bowl, just in case we get shell. As a matter of fact, there was no shell. <laughs> oh well, better safe than sorry. So, one egg. That was easy. Next. And screensaver again. That's why I get it for using a tablet instead of a cookbook. And we are just about done with our dry ingredients though. Because the last thing, it's about two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which seems to be about all I have left here. Fortunately, I have plenty more. Here we go. All right. Now it's just simply time to mix up the wet ingredients. Then we bring them into the dry ingredients. And finally, the chocolate. Despite my mishaps, this isn't so hard as you can see, making a cookie from scratch. Since the chocolate, as I mentioned, was a Christmas present, and there are many ways to get cheap chocolate, you know, like make sure you buy uh, leftover Valentine and Easter candy, if you can find it these days, and keep it in the freezer. So all told, cost of this cookie, as I mentioned, might be about perhaps one third of what you would get at, well, what you'd pay for this at Wally World. The quality is far better. And in fact, that's probably even less than what you would pay for a full sleeve of store-bought cookie dough. In fact, a cookie of this size, you'd probably need two of those things of store-bought cookie dough. So not only is this better, it is much cheaper. There we go. Good enough. Don't worry about these little flecks of butter because they will all melt as the cookie bakes. Which means, good grief. <clears throat> Told you there's chaos. Anyway. Wipe that, wash that off now. All right. Just gotta be sure there are only little mishaps. No big mishaps. And I better not even say the big mishaps because, <laughs> you know, what they say about jinx and, and omens. All right. However, we've done it. So now, the wet ingredients go into the dry ingredients. And in fact, time to break out, instead of that, time to break out a spatula. Here we go. No more mishaps. If you hear me, Lord Ariok of Chaos, no more mishaps, I've had enough. This cookie is for a good cause. This is going to go to my next door neighbor and her kids to thank them for searching for my cat. So it is a good cause, this cookie. There we go. And now we simply mix all this together. Speaking of which, let me try to avoid yet another mishap that usually happens. Usually at this point, I tend to spill out a lot of the flour. So let's do this carefully so that that doesn't happen. What a concept. Just fold it over. 
All right. Oops, there you go. Almost. <laughs> Uh, as Lord, as Elric of Melny Benet would say, blood and souls for my Lord Ariok of Chaos. Those of you who know about Elric of Melny Benet, you are automatically my friends. Here's a hint. The Witcher stole a lot of its stuff from Elric. Hmm. All right. Still, we're getting to a good consistency, and remember, this is supposed to be a dough, so we are doing nicely here. In fact, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I should have used a bigger bowl, because it still has to fit all the chocolate yet. Mm, I think it'll fit. However, we are getting to the point where if I want to... Be sure the dough is at the right consistency. It's time to get in with my hands. Because, yes, I did wash my hands. Um, because, again, this is dough, not batter. So we do want it to be thick. All right, that all looks good. That means now, I repeat, I did wash my hands. And furthermore, this is going to go into the oven at 325 degrees and bake. So no, there is no possibility that uh, anyone will be contaminated by this cookie. All right. There we go. That is what we want. Get ourselves... Oh yeah, there'll be plenty of room for the chocolate. There we go, mix in the rest of it. Get the stuff off the sides too. And in fact, I know what to do. I will transfer this to the pan and then finish because there's more room in the pan. There we go, there's a concept, which means, and besides, this is looking pretty good right now. Here, get to break out the star of the show. A 12 inch, actually 12 and a half inch, cast iron skillet. So, that means now get to do some Crisco. Uh, here, is, here it is. Don't need too much either. It's probably all I need. And grease down the pan. Don't forget the sides. There we go. That wasn't so hard. I will repeat for anybody who just tuned in, I have washed my hands in advance. And again, this is going to be going into a 325 degree oven. Uh, by the way, this recipe, I love, one of the reasons why I love this recipe, if you notice, I've done this all by hand. You did not even need a mixer, or I didn't need a mixer. The recipe for this cookie is on my website. If you look up Cast Iron Chaos, you will find my website with my recipes, including this one. So now from here, here we go, including these extra bits here. All right, Ta -ta -ta. there we go, much more room. And so, 
There's the rest of this kneading. And once we've done that, now it's time to mix in the good stuff. And out of the freezer comes our chopped chocolate. And that's why I'm glad I put it in the freezer. So that, that way, this will not melt from the heat of my hands. Come on, let's do this right. There we go. The rest of it. This was four ounces of chocolate. Milk chocolate to be precise. And again, I'm not worried about this mess because I am, of course, gonna be spreading this all out to cover the pan. So we're doing pretty good. However, to this, we are not quite done. Because now, Also in the freezer, we have more chocolate. These ones are semi-sweet chocolate chips, as opposed to milk chocolate. And I don't need to use too much. I'm gonna mix in some, and then in addition, we'll put some on the top. go. Probably going to put in a few more yet. That should be plenty. All right. So far, so good. Now from here comes the next part, which is simply spreading it out to cover the pan. And as you can see, there's plenty of dough here. So covering this 12 inch pan is not going to be difficult at all. See, it's really only a matter of evening it out. Moment, in fact, there we go, that's a little better. Especially since, again, this is all going to spread out as it bakes. Straighten this out. Okay. Ta-da. And finally, the last step. There we go. I don't want all these chocolate chips on the edge here. And finally, the last step. More chocolate chips. Ah, yeah, you too. All right, this and that. There we go. Push them down. And voila. So good. And with that, there we go. As I said, for maybe one third of the cost of a Wally World so-called giant cookie, we have, again, this is going to be a 12 and a half inch cookie. This is a 12 and a half inch pan full of cookie dough. And now, all we have to do is pop this in the oven and wait which means, let me get this in the oven now, be right back. All right, it is 4.54 on the East Coast. 
So at 5.30, I will start checking the cookie. That's 35 minutes. But there we go. That is our giant cookie. I've got half an hour now to clean up my mess, which is not too difficult. Hmm, what's this? An extra piece of chocolate. Oops, oh dear. Nobody saw that. Okay, but nonetheless, thank you very much, folks. Part two will be coming in about 35 minutes. Thank you, and I do hope to see you again in a little more than half an hour. Hi there. Welcome back to my kitchen for part two of this uh, video on doing a giant cast iron cookie. Uh, this part is the easy part because essentially it's the reveal. So this is probably only going to take a couple of minutes. The hard part was done putting the, the cookie together. And as they like to say, when you can smell it, it's done. So let's get that cookie out of the oven. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> Uh, 12 and a half inches across. Well, maybe slightly smaller because 12 and a half inches technically is the uh, very top of the edge. But still, there we are. I have to let this cool for at least an hour uh, before I take it out of the pan, put it on a tray, and bring it over to my next door neighbor. But there we go. Let me turn off the uh, oven before I forget. And yes, um... If anybody was here about half an hour ago, you saw the making of this. This is, of course, well, obviously, it's a chocolate chip cookie. Well, duh. <laughs> but uh, actually, this uh, chocolate chip cookie was made from scratch because that is very easy to do. Um, I mixed in uh, some chopped milk chocolate along with semi-sweet chocolate chips and ended up with a nice big pan full of cookie dough. And like I said, this is uh, just a little bit more than 12 inches in diameter. So the cost of this cookie, as I mentioned already, was about perhaps one third of what you would pay for a cookie of this size at Wally World. And you better believe the cookie at Wally World is definitely not of the quality of this. As I said, this is made from scratch. This is thicker too. And Every time I eat one of these cookies, I get an incredible sugar rush from it. <laughs> so instead, again, I'll be bringing it over to my next door neighbor and her kids. Give them a sugar rush. Oh boy, how nice of me. <laughs> Actually, as I said, this cookie really is meant as a favor for them. It's a thank you present for helping to search for my cat. Um, so I'm hoping this is going to be something of a good deed, but more importantly, I get to make a uh, big cookie and I get to give it to kids, which is what I really love doing. So yeah, uh, the recipe once again is on my website. I have a website and a YouTube channel called Cast Iron Chaos. And I am not a professional chef. I am not a professional baker. And I am not asking for TikTok gifts either. This is a hobby that I've had for about the past 12 going on 13 years. And I intend to keep on doing this hobby for as long as it's interesting. It certainly continues to be interesting, but it's something new happening every day. Um, so again, that's Cast Iron Chaos. Please feel free to look up that on the web where you can see this cookie and quite a few other recipes, all for free. Again, I'm not asking for donations. Um, I just hope you uh, enjoy this. Thank you very much, everybody. And yeah, of course, you can check out my TikTok channel, too. Uh, have a good evening, folks, and enjoy your Saturday night.